by the way so it's uh hello guys good evening we have a second broadcast today with uh my friend john humanity i think you know his channel and most of you were sent from oh we start the broadcast you have to shut the down the sound so nobody can hear sorry. the double voice so sorry for that guys but so we are still with john john you can say hi <laughs> hello guys okay we're probably uh, good to go so john wanted to ask me a couple of questions which uh, his friend uh, asked him to ask me obviously so you're good to go john Okay, so her first question is, uh, what do you think about space, and um, what about the globe, flat Earth, the whole thing? She wants to know. Okay, so I made um, a post about uh, what I think about the Earth, uh, but first let me share my screen. We can find it probably. We can find it here. Let's go to the channel. And we have a link here, debunking conspiracy. That I was starting this project in the autumn, but uh, for some reasons it's frozen right now. So here I have the uh, what I'm trying to say. This is actually a video about that. So let's like turn it on. There's no sound, buddy. What we can see is if we adjusted the map and it makes a reflection model like we have in all those uh, design patterns that we had in old times, like like this this is the reflection total symmetry of some different parts and it's all around all those carpets and it has different structures so each of this does it has swastikas here swastikas supposed to be the polar star and the uh, uh, rotation of the stars uh, around the polar stars so so I think we have a reflection map, so-called reflection map, which is uh, probably is really has a flat surface. And uh, the global navigation does work because we have this 4D reflection map. If you encircle all those sides, uh, sides to each other, you're going to have a, a globe, obviously. So that's, what, that's how the globe work, works. 
on the flat surface. So, so it is, it's a flat surface, but it reflects like up into the sky or is it a flat surface that is a cell no, that it, reflects in on itself? No, 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 no. You have a flat surface. Okay. Uh huh. So one side of your surface reflects. You have to imagine this. You, you, you cannot see it. Like you, you watch the, the video again if you cannot understand it. So you have the flat surface, you're standing on it, and everything around, if you look around, does reflect itself in symmetry, in uh, ancient pattern situation. Like you have a mural, mural uh, on the walls everywhere. Everywhere you look, you're going to see reflection. So this is the way it's done. Okay, but you cannot see any murals. That's the problem. This way you cannot see no murals. Do you understand me? Um, I am trying to understand you as best I can. When you say mural, do you mean something that is like outside of our like like the ray, the spectrum of light that we can see? Murals is a, a, a mural is a type of thing that actually creates the four D effect. A mirror, a mirror, like something that you look into and it reflects yes. at you. Yes. Oh, okay, mural okay, okay, reflection, okay. reflection mural. Yeah. Okay. Okay, like mirror, mirror on the wall, sounds like that. So. Yes, I think it's just that the uh, the the recording it sounds like mural, like a painting, and that's why nice. I was like, "What the? It's okay, buddy. You're okay. Mirror. Okay, I got you. It's a mirror. So we can when we look in the mirror, we see a reflection of ourselves, but when we look yeah. outside, we can't see the reflection back at us. Mm, not exactly. Mirror is the the way I can explain you how it actually reflects. But you cannot see any mirror this time because uh, it's all shifted. So when you uh, have the sun and the moon, you you are talking with time. The sun and the moon position uh, coordinates you in your 4D world. So whatever the position of sun and the moon is different to like second ago and day ago and month ago so that's your traveling through the fourth fourth dimension dimension oh okay you understand it yes yes i do i'm following you let so me the, can i ask you something the the yes, sound isn't yes. working my friend can't my friend can't hear anything we're saying right now sound is working i see my sound is working at least yeah i, I hear you you hear me yeah so before that, everybody, let's let's uh, check on the on the chat what the chat says. Please. Do you guys hear us? Let's see. Sound is working. This they right. Okay. Okay. So that's only your friend's problem, I guess. Okay. So can you ask another question? Yes. One second. And that's only one thing, you know, that's only one cell. We're talking about only one cell. And we, if we're going to talk about how the whole world looks, we sh should uh, we should read this thing that I posted a couple of days ago. Let's see. Oh, this one. Let me show my screen again so we are a processor of a huge computer system which is located in the universal computer mega system which is connected with water around it so we are we were formed on the ruins of giant civilization with which was formed on the ruins of silicon era times we were connected at some period of time to the other parts parts of our world, which is connected to our cell, which could be the center of our universe. The universe floats inside a world connecting universe and a small galaxies of universes. Don't get me wrong, we are flat and stationary. The others rotate above us. We are the Midgard, the universe center. 
this yes, is... I shared this. I shared this post actually on my page. This fascinates me. So, do, so do you think that, for example, the reason why they propagate the idea of space, the infinite, is to create? Do you think it's possible for us to create the cell that we live in? For example, if we just sail out into the ocean and believe there's land there, can the program itself create more land? The land is already created. We cannot create any land anymore. So all we can do is uh, look back in the history, figure out how we connected to other cells so we can restore the information line, so-called universal knowledge, universal uh, internet, whatever you name it. And if we get connected to those guys around us, we can probably figure out how to improve our life and become the center of our universe because we were the center of the universe the midgard land everybody knows that we are the land be, uh, in the middle of the lands of navis and the lands of dark navis so that those navis lands are another part of this world we have to talk about that too because this is very interesting thing and uh, we go to that world every night when we sleep we go either to the navis world or to the dark navis world if we if, if we descend during the dream we go to the dark navis world which is uh, inhabited with the dark so-called dark evil forces and if we go to the novice world, we go to the uh, we uh, elevate in your dreams. Whatever you go, if you go high, if you go to, uh, uh, if you elevate in even like one step, you're going to Navi world. If you descend, if you jump in the water, if you go inside some cave or whatever or a basement, you descend into dark Navi worlds, which are above the Midgard. When and you this say is what you have when to you say when you say Navi, do you mean um, like from the movie Avatar or no 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 movie Avatar stole that name? We really are the door to the Navi worlds. So we are this body, this 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 thing that we're in is the is the Avatar, and then when we leave, we go back to where we're from. No no no, Avatar is just uh, some type of uh, well. Navi is clo more close to the ancient world navigation. Understand? Okay. Yes. So Navi is not from Avatar. It's real name of the worlds, of the group of the worlds, which are above in so-called the heaven. Okay? Wow. Heaven is the place where no dark people, dark uh, creatures can go. That's why it calls heaven. It actually Are we means dark. Do you mean dark? Do you mean like dark skinned or dark? Oh, no, evil? dark uh, means evil. Okay, this. evil uh, means a lot. Dark means evil, actually, but sure. evil means a lot too much. So you can understand uh, the evil people at uh, those people want to have too much of something, whatever you call it uh, money life, uh, you know, women, whatever. The people that want too much of something, more than enormous, enormous, you know, something. So what do you think, what do you think that the people who control Midgard, our world, like, what do you think they want too much of? They want too much of us. Of they us. They want too much of slaves, too yeah. much slaves. Yeah. That's okay. what they want. They want shippo. They want control us. They want our lives, our time. That's the only thing they, they can take from us. And who are they? Who do you think they are? What is the power behind it? Is it from a different place? Of course. it's a, We have a lot of cells around us, and everyone wants to take control of the center because the center is the gate to Navi worlds. It's the only thing you can go there. So... If they, if you, if you really want to uh, grow in your spiritual, you know, thing, spiritual body, you have to go to Navi worlds. 
and all those guys from the dark navi worlds they know that there's no way if you cannot control midgard you cannot have a war with navi world so they have a war with navi world only here on midgard Okay, and so let me just, because this is all, I've never heard any of this before in my life, so I have questions. Is that okay? Okay. Okay, so when you say Navi World, that is not Midgard. Navi World is above us, and do we go there? And we go there when we dream, and the only yeah. way that people can go, do we go there? You say it's heaven, then you say that's where we go after we pass on? No, we don't pass on. Okay, I mean, our, bodies, just, uh, our bodies, our bodies, we shed our bodies. Yeah, we, we just, uh, we have about nine bodies, each of every, and every one of us. But we don't see them because we don't have them actually developed. And we don't have this, uh, this is the one of the bodies, just one of the bodies. is the smallest one, almost the, the, one of the smallest in nine bodies. If you uh, want to know how the uh, the structure of a man looks, I'll tell you. This is the way. So, somebody pictures it's like ten. Somebody pictures it's nine. But I know it's nine. So. Even though uh, Chinese guys have seven bodies, as they say, well, we know that in our books it was written that we had nine bodies. So this is like a physical body here. It's almost the smallest one. So you can understand how a, a giant could develop on uh, our plane. When you grow your bodies, you become bigger and bigger each time. Wow. How and do you know? Why. How do you know this information? Like, is this coming from resources that are in Russian? Are they coming it's from history? It's Russian language. It's Russian, uh, Russian stories. That's sure. how okay. big guys were. The biggest guys were like this. So they protected this place, okay, from all those evil forces that wanted to shut us down every time shut our connection with the navi world whoever controls this world can't shut down the connection and control the population that's why we have all these destroyed objects everywhere they were actually the network of connection with the other cells and other cells connected through us with the navi world so right now other cells have in war with those parasitic races, parasitic races which shut us down from the Navi world. We lost the battle in probably 17th and 18th century. We started oh. over, and uh, that's what we are today. Do they hate us? Do they hate us as humanity, or do they just enjoy the enslavement? I don't know what they're really doing. Maybe uh, somebody says that they are just like our teachers. Okay. Do you understand? Um, like, I think I understand that they could be teachers, but I don't think they do the teaching correctly. No, it's okay. When, uh, when you uh, doing something, of course, you have some mistakes. But uh, this is... Uh, the situation that they go all over again and they rotate the same technology every time. So I think they are on the, on the right path until we figure out that uh, we are enslaved like this. Uh, until we figure out the real history, we cannot stop them from doing what they're doing. So this it's a good lesson if we really figure it out. We will get an A great for that and so so once we wake up because what i understand from like gnosticism is that waking up and actually like understanding the, the the true nature of like your own enslavement i guess you could say disconnecting from the parasitic paradigm i understand that that's the way of like um i guess you could say if you pass on that you can go to what you would call the navi world is if you actually wake up 
You go to another world, whatever you do here. No matter what. Lose, no matter what. If you lose or if you don't lose, if you if you are still here, you go to another world every day. And no, no, when I mean, then you die, you wait for a new body, and uh, you are eager to start it all over again. And maybe next time you're gonna. The connection is shut down, so you can't remember your past lives, man. That's a, that's a problem. If if any of us remembered actually what happened, we wouldn't be here right now. We would be working in the fields like we used to do. We would be doing ecological food. We would be raising our families with 15 plus kids and stuff like that. So that's what we'd be doing. No cities, nothing like this. But in my mind, that would be better than what we're living in now, because I think that right now is completely artificial. And I think that it drives us to a sort of society that connection, spirituality, um, familial connection, everything I think that is natural about what life would be is gone. Yes, we had technologies and we had guys who protected us. But once we were fooled with the straight deal called Atlantis, and they figured out that we wanted to trade, we wanted to expand, and they engaged us with some little conflicts. Then they cut us in pieces. That's what I'm trying to explain in my previous videos about mud flood series and stuff like that. So they cut us down. First, they cut our trees, which was a neural network connection to the Navi world. Second thing that they do, they uh, cut us from our ancestors and our beliefs. So they found that if we switch to new religion, which is uh, literally means reuniting, religion is reuniting with some community, finding the community again, so so-called religion. So religion was made to make us uh, a shippo, type of society yes i agree with that 100 percent. do you do you think that um religion the religious texts were evolved from tr a true aspect of reality like the navi world what you're saying about um like I, I guess jesus the whole not jesus but like christianity and going to heaven is this all a um parasitic paradigm or is it based upon some fact because on my channel i talk a lot about how the bible is um very much an inversion of reality it's just kind of a mirror of what actually is and i still think that so what do you think oh just uh, maybe an a couple of hours ago, I was asking, uh, ask a question about uh, Jewish guys, and I was telling and the thing about uh, that uh, Kabbalah, the secret of Torah, and stuff like that is kept by 40 guys who are above 40 years old. Only 40 guys know the secret, so nobody's gonna tell us the real secret of Kabbalah, Torah, or Bible, which was re-edited and edited a bunch of times. Just imagine yes. if they tell us all those secret allegories and uh, uh, explain us and comment every every word of Bible, we would go crazy because it means exactly, sometimes it means exactly the opposite what we know. Yes, I totally agree. I 100% agree with the exact opposite. Sometimes I think that um, we're given the exact opposite, and then we actually have to take the, the opposite again. It's sort of like a double inversion. We have to take it twice the opposite, too. I think it's very freaky how the whole world is um, like a reflection, and then you can take a reflection of a reflection. Yeah, When are you familiar with editing text and editing, uh, you know, something? Have you edit, edited something? Yes, I have. So uh, just imagine that a flood occurred. Yes, I know what you Yes, OK. Some catastrophe occurred, and you are the grandkid of the guy who was actually familiar with that situation, who was actually surviving the flood Yes. as a kid. Not as a grown-up, as a kid, because all the grown-ups probably are dead by now. You are the grandchild of that guy. What can, can, he, can he explain to you? Nothing. So do you. 
and you can only use something like uh it was wow before, yes uh, wow that's a wonderful comparison philip yes that's before the flood or that's after the flood that's the only thing that you can you can say and so when you uh read the bible text of ancient times and maybe it's, it's a you know some edition of 17th or 16th century you read those words in different uh, typography typography and you don't understand even the spelling how can you explain what it really is what books you have to include what books you have to exclude and they met those guys they met a couple of times they argued and they returned to some version of original old testament which was adopted only in the second half of 19th century so the old testament was re-edited a couple of times during the 19th century so is the new testament or about christ so figure that out, please. I mean, I have kind of said, Philip, I've said that the Old Testament is 100%, I mean, 90 to 100% just not even, not even, I mean, it should just be discounted, in my opinion. I don't think that it's, I don't think it's very credible at all because it has been, one, it's been re-edited. I mean, the whole Bible is very, very much, I go into this a lot on my channel or I try, not I go into it, I try to avoid going into it because I find that Christians are the people that are waking up the quickest. But then, um, on the other hand, I don't want to pull away their last rope of hope because so many Christians don't want to look into the history. They don't, and I say this all the time that the history is the most important aspect to all of this. Because if you don't understand that, then you can't really comment on anything else. What do you think? Yeah, you're right. But you, when you talk about Old Testament, you have to figure out that it was written from Torah. And you have to go to that source first. And I did, and I actually uh, read a bunch of these Torah books. And you know, it means a bunch of times we have a real definition in Torah, we don't have it in Bible. Because Bible was re-edited more than Torah. So yes, okay. in Torah, they, they specify, for example, uh, okay, we, we, we'll talk about the first uh, chapter of Genesis, the creation, when, uh, you have six days and six days he did it all he created everything even humans mind that please so and after that another guy he he took a rest in saturday and on seventh day another guy whose name is lord started to create another humankind which was adam and eve although the previous god already created humankind in in a day of six read it by yourself you can find it it's easy so you have uh, uh, two gods two different gods on genesis chapter one who are creating different type of people in one book on one chapter and then wow. th then it and explains you... how their children uh, cain abel and whoever was that when they split up and um, went around the, the world they met another people and it says that's how they actually find their wives because there were people around oh i under, i got you oh that's very fascinating i mean do you think that these are the like the red-headed giants and the white giants or what do you think no i think just the uh, people from another cell came to our cell that's why we have to this explanation so wow it was okay to, you know, one cell was called paradise, or in Russian, uh, we call it Israel, because wow. they went out of paradise. So out of paradise is called Israel in Russian. And, and Israel, then, then, then what we see is Israel right now, nothing about our map with the Bible and those places, Mediterranean and everything, none of that has really any grounding in fact israel would be outside of this cell yeah israel is the, another cell which is, was created by another god and he's uh, named lord his name is lord he's he was lord of his cell and he created maybe cloned people from his uh dna 
He's he's made it just like him. He 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 read it on the seventh day. Oh, That's you have incredible. to read yourself and analyze it one more time. It's a well-known thing, and everybody knows it. it. In Torah, they specify the names of those gods. One of is uh, Elohim, something like that, and another yeah. one, I, I don't remember. So, well, let me just say something about that, Philip. I know that you think that people know this, or that a lot of people know this, or everyone knows this. But let me just say that I um I work I've worked in five churches over the last five years. My mother was born a Christian. She went to college for biblical theology. I've read the Bible full through like multiple times as a child, once as an adult. And I had no idea about anything like that. I only knew about Elohim, like the true I the true names of God and like what we're talking about. There being different types of God, like the Lord, God that's capitalized, God that's not capitalized. So I don't think that necessarily like a lot of people understand what you're talking about because I can guarantee that if it's new to me, there's not much new information to me. And all of this sounds much newer to me, or at least it's being explained in a more logical way than um, I've heard it before. I've definitely heard of multiple gods, multiple versions of humanity being created, but not... Um, not sort of where it's coming from a different cell and stuff like that. I think that there's more information that you should consider maybe like making videos about just so that you can give, I guess, a precursor to going and reading the Torah because I can guarantee if I read the Torah, I'm not going to get that they came from another, but not planet, another cell and seeded our cell. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, because uh, you know how they do it. They take the smartest guys from the crowd Let's say we have like a crowd here, a sheeple. So you want to control the sheeple, you have to have some dogs, right? So those dogs, you know, surround the, this sheeple. And whether, whenever the dog uh, leader moves, the rest of the dogs move in the same direction. And the sheeple is controlled. Sheeple is going the right path. So that's why, that's how they do it. They take the smartest guys. The smartest guys at that time were Jews. And they told them, you guys, you know, read this book and do it what we're doing. Let me ask you a question. Don't be offended, okay? Okay. Are you a Jew? No. And you worked for a um, huge media corporation. And did you ever see corruption? Did you ever see what some would call the elite or the Illuminati? I don't really enjoy that term. I do enjoy elite. What do you think? And what um, happened? I, I've talked a bunch of elite. And, you know, it's, it's not, they are not the, ta the, the type of elite you're talking about. This is a real elite. The guys want to help us. The guys are really, most of the elite are the guys that want to help us. But, you know, the elite is just, it's, it's not even dogs. They are elite of sheeple. Okay? Dogs are really the guys I'm talking about and call them players of the bridge game that they're playing with us. Yes, okay. Those are the dogs. One dog of them is the religious mafia. And they have players inside those, those player teams. And I've mentioned all those uh, players inside each team. So only one player can play on the table of bridge. Right now, we have like multiple areas of the playground. One of them is Ukraine. One of them is Syria. One is globalism. One is uh, human uh, depopulation game which we actually do play every day we yes, gotta I figure agree. that out i agree but do you okay so you're saying that these dogs these these big elites not the sheep elites i understand what you're mean what you mean but the big dogs but they want they have the best in mind for us because that sure doesn't look like anything i'm seeing from what you just said that doesn't sound like they have the best in mind for us if they're controlling the idea like the Ukraine and they're de controlling the, de the depopulation agenda, how is any of that, um, I guess, herding the sheep into a place of glorious paradise or pasture? So you are a master of uh, your dogs and your sheep, right? If you see two dogs walking around and talking too much, they start fucking around, you know? Yeah. Literally. Maybe they are even attracted to each other so what are you gonna do with one dog you gotta shoot one dog because if every dog is gonna be doing the same thing like those two dogs so you have to shoot one dog that's what they're doing 
if those two dogs start to get connecting and start to thinking about what what the hell is really going on if they get bored controlling the shippo and they want to start their own game they're gonna be shut down that's what the game is that's why they are not not you know they are talking to each other but they are not acting together because if they start to act together they're gonna be shut down so are these the people so do you think that the dogs above the sort of i guess the sheeple elite are the sheeple elite like jewish like is that are you talking about hollywood and sort of like the entertainment industry this is just a little uh, percentage of this elite they are not uh, decision makers sure. so-called managers okay we have managers uh, inside the sheeple uh, the managers are inside this so-called uh, paradigm i don't know do you know this word paradigm paradigm yeah whatever so <laughs> and the paradigm is uh to filter all the good guys and they are being filtered so the most angry evil people come on top the pyramid and it, they are connected to the dogs the middle class elite which is most uh, has like maybe 95 percent of all elite they're they're pretty good they're pretty good and they are not so evil as we think they are just uh, the guys who execute the orders and they know what they're doing exactly in the area they specified and they are qualified in so they have to have a diploma, they have to have MBA or whatever. So this is a system. They grow up on, on this nice morality, so-called nice morality. And they grow on this so-called nice education, decent education, higher education, whatever. And they get those MBA brainwashing uh, education programs and eventually they go and become a, an executive manager of some company or maybe tv channel they're nice guys if you talk to each and every one of them you can understand they are really uh, professionals in their areas and they know what they're talking about and that's why we have interviewed many guys on uh, one of my previous jobs or what i was talking about we interviewed a bunch of them we interviewed physics, we interviewed politicians, we interviewed most of uh, the famous guys, even uh, the guy who knows uh, everything. Like he was on a team, we have a game which called what, when, uh, where, something like that. So this is a game in Russia, very famous game. It was uh, designed for the guys who are very uh, smart and they like sit in the, in the team, six people in the team, and they a answer the questions of uh, written in the letters of uh, the viewers of this program, TV program. So they send a question. If their question wins, they get uh, some money, which was a bet on this question, like maybe ten thousand dollars or something like that so the game is uh, counted to six so often there is six five five six like this so even uh, some people are smarter than those smart guys and they win the game it's called the tv viewers win won the game so those guys we interviewed those guys who are actually smarter than everyone i know and they talk really nice things and understand what is really going on and they cannot do anything with it you know they cannot do anything with it they they have to obey the system so it's up to us it's up to us the regular people to ignite the situation because some of the elite provides us the information that they are familiar with it and they uh, actually execute some leaks of information for us so we can wake up faster because um well it's a step-by-step -step situation because we cannot just wake up like that so we cannot do it 
without them. And without, they are, the, without the people who give us little breadcrumbs. Yes. So we cannot, you know, just like, if we do it like this, like revolution type of thing, rapid, rapid information, most of us are going to die. Why? Because we're going to have a war. That's, yes, but would you think, okay, so if you, on that note, if you, like a war of some sort, would it be a war fought with guns? It would going to be a civil war like it always has. Civil war. Aren't we heading towards, aren't we heading towards a civil war? I mean, isn't that what's going to be coming? I, I wonder, Philip, I really do wonder if you, I wonder, does this place, does the place we live like re reset itself? like with the mud flood like what caused the mud flood itself and was it a reset or of something or was it just a um the elite doing something was it purposeful or was it done by god was it done through our plane itself or please elaborate on that what we know about this time is uh like 40,000 years ago one of the major gods uh, visited our cell and he said that we're gonna have like a 40,000 years of dark times so we must get prepared and he profited or whatever predicted uh, those dark ages so uh, maybe they are not well uh, well described in that book that I've read but mostly it uh, shows maybe the end of the part that we uh, live today which is uh, in indian vedas it's called kali yuga yes maybe maybe you've heard about it so it's like uh some on some uh theories it it, it ended in 60s in the beginning of 60s last century on some uh versions of theories it ended in 2012 so we just uh, on some uh, series they say it it ended at 2016 so like we have a first year uh which is 75 25 right now so the 75 25 was the first year after the end of those dark times so uh, right now we have like a, a rise sun rising symbolic sun rising of information of old information that's coming out uh, real, real knowledge, not the fake knowledge, just real knowledge. And when you say that it's coming out, um, do you think that this knowledge is coming out because of some sort of fundamental process of awakening that is inbuilt into the cell or a process that God built up? Or do you think that it is something that has to be executed by people who, by the elite themselves as a way to fulfill prophecy? yeah we return to the 4d model of flat earth so if we can understand the 4d process the process of uh sun moon the position above us and the actual calculation of so-called stars position we can understand that something is really going on and each year we have different uh, some little difference with another year so if we can measure like thousands or tens of thousands of years we know that something called the precession of the sun completes like 26,000 years something yes like that. yes so uh, if we suppose that that period of time was actually predicted by that ancient god and he's he told us that something was wrong with our position on this 4d uh 4d uh, projection and uh he made of meant that after that we're gonna have something different so this is the ending of that process and we're gonna have something different first uh maybe some influence of some um activeness of those parasitic people is gonna end so maybe uh, what we can have today is the end of their era so-called era maybe they are living our cell and maybe they left only dogs to watch around okay because they cannot live right now here maybe they they have some type of invisible 
rays that spread to our cell which they cannot uh, survive do you understand what i'm saying yes i understand what you're saying i got you so they're leaving behind like some sort of entity over so their time is done and they basic basically get uh, get influenced by new uh, sp spreading of information the invisible world is okay. on and right now we have the mode from off to on turned on and we can have uh, to we can reestablish the connection to this uh, universal connection uh, system are we the antenna? Are we as humanity, individual people, the antenna? Or does this require technological effort? Humans are the parts of this huge processor. So okay. we can actually uh, do something in this computer system, so-called computer system. So when you have your piece, personal computer, you have uh, the operator of the computer and the processor, which sends signals for some programs to start doing this information analysis and doing something actually on the screen or on uh, something, okay? So we are those who actually creating the thinking and we are making the production of anything. Yes, we can actually... I, I agree with you 100%. So that's why this Matrix movie actually one our minds because it actually shows us uh, the imitation of that process but if we think about deeper about this thing we can actually do it we can do anything according to resources and time that we got okay and we got a whole bunch of time now nobody's gonna stop us and we're gonna do it like we need to do it if we figure out how the ancients did it we can reestablish that order that new world order that all those guys are talking about, okay? So do you think that these people who talk about the new world order, do you think that they are the good guys, or do you think that they are um, propagating, I guess, an idea? I guess, is it, an, is it an inversion? Is it a reflection again? Is it a good thing, or is it a bad thing? It's a good thing, because if you're going to find out what is the new world order, you're going to understand that order itself is the old world order that actually occurred before the flood and before the takeover okay this is the order order is the way that we lived order is uh, when you pay 10 percent for your military and security expenses to the guys who protect you and that's it that's the only tax you pay okay this this is order when you uh, give one uh, one out of your ten sons to a military service, you have it, ten sons, and you give one son to a military service. That's yes, it. That's yes. order. Like That's in the like order. in the Russian horde, right? Like in the Russian horde of what they were doing before in Russia and Great Tartaria. It's not only Russian. We are Russia. This planet. Yeah, uh, I was, agree. This this whole planet was called Ro Rus after a Ra, God, the God of Ra, so-called Egyptian God, but he was not Egyptian because Egypt was just the province of Rus. So uh -huh. we know it because we stayed, uh, we, we, st we, we conquered those T Tatarians guys and uh, Russians were the last European nation who conquered and beat up the hell of those Tatarians because we had rifles and guns and they had only spikes. That's why they lost. But they are the same Russians as we all. Well, let me ask you, when you did this video, you did a video about sort of like ancient lightsabers or something like that with uh, electricity and stuff. Wasn't this yeah. like weaponry, this technology? Are you talking about they were conquered after the mud flood was... And you, okay, let me also ask you, I have to clarify this. First, let me ask you two questions, and uh, you can answer them in whatever order you want. They, mm -hmm. First off, about the weaponry, um, did it happen? Are we talking about pre-mud flood or after the mud flood? Pre-mud flood, pre-mud flood. Free mud flood. Okay, and then two, um, I asked you the question, was it done purposefully from inside of our cell or was it something that God enacted himself? 
In Russia, we know that the God is evil and good at the same time. Okay, so uh, the uh, the main God, the, the Creator, so called, uh, what do you call it? In Russian, it's called Rod. It, uh, it means like um, maybe I'll explain it like this: a huge tree of your ancestors. Okay. Can you imagine a huge tree of your dynasty before you and you are just one leaf of this tree? Can you imagine it? Yes, sure. Like, yeah, okay. You're just one uh, leaf of this tree. So this is Rod. Rod is the, the tree of your ancestors, which you uh, actually take part, a huge part. So uh one branch of you of this tree may be evil so-called evil and another branch is so-called good but they are the branches of the same tree so is the human uh, uh, human symbolizing like this so you have one huge god and he has one hand in left hand for example it's evil and the right hand is good so he has can have like two sons and stuff like that and one son can be good another son can be so-called evil and when i talk about evil you have to understand that i mean not evil in modern definition i mean evil uh, is just the, the guy that wants to have too much okay it's not the same equals evil like we used to know just the guy that wants to have too much well, I think, Philip, that's really interesting because I think that that idea of wanting too much is exactly um, sort of like the driving force of almost every evil agenda in the world. Okay, I know I know that you probably have seen my channel and you're like, yo, this John Humanity is nuts out of his mind. But I really think I provide a good case to my viewers and that's why I think that they follow me or whatever. But so when I talk about these transgendered people, I, I really truly believe it's because they want so much to be beautiful and they see their own gender, their own facial structure, their body structure as something that they can improve upon to the point of perfection. And so they want too much to be beautiful. They can't um, sort of accept what was given to them. And so they sort of over, they're overcome by narcissism. And that narcissism, I think is what the Bible would call like, um, I guess like the spirit there's like there's like so many the vain vanity and they would also call it I guess like sort of like feminism is also the spirit of wanting too much the spirit of the Jezebel from the Bible they want too much they want to be more than men but I really think that it's an idea that's propagated by the elite themselves and I think that a lot of these agendas and a lot of the evil of the world is just that, just wanting too much, wanting too much money, wanting fame, wanting talent, wanting anything, I guess. So I guess that's, I think that it is like the definition of evil is wanting too much, as you just said. I think it reflects itself perfectly on the cell that we're living in and the paradigm that we live in. Yeah, but if we talk about transgender this situation i would like to mention one thing that in russian legends we had information from that uh, god who actually visited uh, us forty thousand years ago he said that uh, those parasites we're gonna have to be uh, can be a wife and a husband at the same time oh my god i just got chills wow i just got chills to my whole body so wow. uh they are not transgender they are androgenic okay do you understand i i agree no i agree with you they are two different things they are two different things i don't um i don't distinguish too much because the effect of the and androgyny the, the the effect that we essentially see is what we see in in the regular sheep hole now let me ask you something because the the question i get so much is are okay do you, let me ask you your opinion. What do you think of, I guess, my uh, uh, explanation of transgenderism in the elite or androgyny? Do you think that it's possible? Well, uh, we we got to understand one thing, because you know, just imagine if you were rich, okay, you know the situation. You know uh, how things are really on. You're a well-informed person. 
uh, would you do something to you that actually would ruin your health and you're gonna be stuck and uh, put on drugs on everyday hormones and stuff like that would you do that for some uh, serious reason no that's I think that Philip that's very simple that's very um simplified I think that um, would if the if one of the agendas is for example you said that they have to leave they're going to leave behind a, an imprint on society and if something like this has been happening this sort of this idea of transgendering or castration prepubescent transgendering has been happening since I mean for a, for a long time the, the history has been talking about this I think that this could be an imprint that lasts a while, especially if this is, I don't know if, if you notice in Russia, but in America, it's everywhere. The, the youngest generation are literally shedding the idea of two genders. Like they, they really believe in the androgynousness. They really believe that there is no such thing as like uh, one, one gender, two genders. There's like 56 genders out there. And I really think that this could be part of the imprint that's being left. And I'm not sure exactly if the elite themselves if this is there, I think that it's, I think it's pretty clear. I don't think that the elite themselves, the real elite, the dogs that you call are transgendering themselves, but I do think that they are forcing underlings to transgender themselves and propagate that on the public, I guess. Well, you, you have to uh, listen to what I say right now. So um, let me show you this. Okay. Can you see what I'm showing? In Hangouts, yes. Yeah, so uh, in the end of 18th century, they, they took over, uh, let's see, they started using this. Do you see what I'm showing? Yes, yes, and this is, yes, yep, yep, yep. Why do you think they started using this? Because they were, uh, most of those guys were just a cover-up of some of them who were androgynous. So they could have, uh, have a man like this, but he was androgenic, for example. And that's why he used makeup at that time. And they start uh, the fashion which cut the beards of the men so they cannot be distinguished by the real man. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes, I agree. Okay, so that's why they're doing it today because they want to cover up. They have less uh, masters, masters left, and the dogs who are really surprised that the masters are leaving most of the masters are already dead and left you know to to leave midgard you have to die first of all you gotta understand that because the connection is lost as i've said the only way you leave the midgard you have to die or get killed so that's the way you leave this place and if you want to cover up that you androgenic you have to do something like this that's why the fashion was like that they could be an ugly androgenic person but when they have a makeup and this hair on they look pretty fine and were accepted by the society I 100% agree with you, Philip. But I, I I agree with you, and I think that this it, what you're showing here is exactly something I think that I should show on my channel. One is this exactly, but I think that um, something that fascinates me is that they these androgen and androgenic or androgynous I, we would say androgynous androgynous people they also. Um, if you have castrated someone prepubescently, then you don't gain any of your secondary sex characteristics, and which would be like, I talk about it all the time, sort of like how guys have really like wide shoulders and, you know, bigger heads and stuff like that, bigger necks, bigger everything, bigger than a woman. If you kept the body of a prepubescent boy and you are giving them horse urine or however it's being collected, then essentially it will create create the the 
the androgynous thing that looks like a creature from, it just looks like a creature, but it's really some sort of half gender thing. I mean, I don't know if you saw, I know that, I know that you probably don't get into like the, the deepness and the, like the, the part, that part of my channel or whatever, but there's a video I did called, um, like there's entire villages of transgenders. And it's essentially about the idea that this entire village in the Dominican Republic has boys that are being born with full vaginas and that, um, by when they turn like 12 or 13, they get the um, flood of testosterone in their body from, pubes from puberty, and then they grow a penis when they're about 13 or so. And I think that that whole thing, and, and a lot of my channel commenters were saying that um, it could be that they were testing vaccines over there, and they were testing um, just different bio biochemicals and et, et cetera, et cetera, and that this is the effect that they produce that they could bring into a narrower stream of the elite population to do the same thing. Yeah, well, uh, I'll, I'll agree with you for this time because to disagree, I have to explain myself and I don't want this topic to expand a little, but I, I want to say one thing so you can think about it. Uh, they, uh, you said they castrated boys so they can like be stay boys even though they grow up, right? Yes. So you know why they do that? Why? Because if you have sex with the boy, uh, with the young boy, you gain his uh, gain his uh, youth. That's why they keep the boys as long as they can. Okay, you understand that? But would you would you say that they would also give them estrogen to become more feminine? That's just the way to cover up uh, the thing that they stay a boy. They stay him as a boy. I agree with you. I agree with you on everything that you just said. So I mean. So how do I, you explain how do you explain a person that he's supposed to screw up with some you know some type of dude that he doesn't even know who he is? How can you explain him? You have to uh, bring him to some propaganda thing about prettiness of this thing, so he can like switch his sex and stuff like that. But when he is a young boy and he he is raped, when it's a pedophilia case, like uh, you know, a bunch of those guys trying to uh, whistleblower for a couple of years, and this Podesta email scandal, this is pr this is proven that my theory is pretty right because they use it as a way of expanding their lives so they can like be more younger and uh, that's why they do it because that's the only secret they show them you know because yeah, they're just I a sheep like we are I they are just a cover up of the higher people higher level people which are really androgenic and they give them this uh, system to stay younger and live a little longer than just ordinary people, but still they die after maybe a hundred years. And oh. a couple of hundred years ago, we lived for at least 150 years, at least. Okay, yes. our body can can live more than 150 years. Well, we're living in a way that kind of we kind of shorten our our lifespans just by waking up in the morning at this point, don't we? I don't know what are you talking about, but uh, they just uh, we we had like a doctor in Russia who was uh, testing everything in uh, the beginning of twentieth century, and he stated that uh, every death of a person which is younger than 150 is a murderer okay oh yes 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 so in any kind of way they shorten our life a bunch of methods and that's why they can stay younger or they can stay and live older than we are in general so that's the only way to control people. You have to keep tradition and don't let anyone in this circle. Okay. So can I ask you a question? So about I'm just gonna go, I have to go back because so um, if for example if the if these upper beings or the masters are androgynous, then 
um, would you think that maybe selling your own child into androgyny, into this sort of castration system, do you think that that is something that I find a lot is like this argument that like, are they all, are they all transgendered? Are they all androgynous? And I don't personally think that they all are, but then sometimes you'll just find that like, for example, the parents look normal, but then the daughter is definitely a man, for example. And I think that that, could be some sort of sellout or um, sort of like you you do this to your kids so that I can live longer and you get all the fame and money that you want, for example, and then that child gets to be famous later, for example. Probably I would agree with you that they their kids is not their kids. Their kids just a sex do sex dolls that they yes. actually adopt yes. and they show them as like like their kids and the real kids uh, staying close to them but not showing as a kid. Okay. So they can, you know, travel with some people around them and screw him. That's it. That's the kids' role in that game. And then when they grow up a little, like 30 or 40, they start to doing this by themselves. Wow. Well, the same situation. That's why uh, many famous people like to have kids when they are like 60, when their first kids grow up. But they adopt another kids and they like you know expand more lifetime with new kids so it's the system it's the system it's the culture that we have there's no way we can fight with it until we get the whole information well let me ask you something do you think that this sort of thing is important to wake people up because that's the only reason why i do it i have reason why i put these videos out there so people understand that what, because I think that it's so subversive to your mind to watch someone who is androgynous and then, like, I guess, like, uh, get off to that idea. And, like, I think it's very perverse. I think that that's why there's so much well, perversion. You, you, you can do it, of course. And maybe uh, you, I don't know, how do you call it? Alarm clock. Yes. It's an alarm clock. It has to be loud. It has to be provocative. It has to... Uh, turn on attention of the people so yes. if you are in an alarm clock and you feel like an alarm clock you can do it of course i don't feel like an alarm clock because every time i started alarming and started telling everybody what's really going on in the past years i was uh, you know laughed yes, and, uh, yes. that's why i don't do it uh, to my family and friends because uh, it's not good. They're not woke up. So uh, I see uh, many people expanding in flat earth society. That's why I started this broadcasting activities because before that I didn't do it. And after one show that Lori Ferrari in from conspiracy, uh, flat earth conspiracy channel invited me to talk about uh, the uh, silicon trees and giants and stuff like that. So. After that, I started, I thought, well, you don't know anything, guys. You are just like, you know, way, way behind in any topic except like flat earth and stuff like that. So that's why I started to tell you what I know, what you guys don't even thought about, heard about. And I think that's okay because you expanded very much in flat earth topics and many more topics. And really i find out more and for myself because people send me links send me pictures send me questions well i found many friends like you john and many more so like we talk much uh, in messenger and facebook and so it's okay for me because uh, i feel I feel like, uh, you know, telling this information because I want to make a documentary movie in uh, English so you can guys like, you know, spread it because my videos are pretty hard to understand and uh, I can see most people abandon it even though maybe they're intrigued by the topic but they cannot hear me, they cannot maybe understand me, they cannot, you know, see the what biggest, I'm saying. The biggest yeah. criticism... 
the biggest the biggest criticism that I've heard of your videos that come to my channel because I got criticism about you and I just kind of I kind of take nuclear bombs to it because if they don't understand that it's the, some of the most important information on the internet right now then they are missing out but um, the things that I hear are that you, you don't get to the point of the mud flood or like why or how it happened or all of this stuff and just don't give enough time to the videos themselves but I also think that sometimes it's difficult because have you seen Nick Research's videos? Maybe not, maybe not. About Napoleon being sort of faked as his portraits being faked and stuff through um, medieval or 19th century. Yeah, this, that's one of my future videos that, that uh, they mixed up two Napoleons Actually, I was explained about it a little in my previous videos, and I wanted to tell that uh, the Crimean War was actually uh, mixed up with the War of 1812, and it's one war uh, made up of two wars that actually uh, happened in one war. Wow! So. I'll send you. I'll send you his name because he actually did two, like, or maybe three, six-hour segments of of this topic of Napoleon. And I watched a bunch of it, and I really was convinced about it. But I think that hour, the even like, I'm sorry, but like sometimes twenty minutes. If you haven't, I guess, really um, sort of streamlined it, or um, but really um, brought it into a focal point, a point of interest, then I think it's really difficult to get through the whole topic. Which six is six hours is good. Is bad. Is bad. Six is hours bad. Is bad. Is bad. Is yeah. bad. Yeah. But I think that sometimes it's hard to like, like I think that uh, just like explaining what the topic of the video is would really help. Like exactly. Here's the premise, and then or here's the introduction, and then here's all the information about it. Because I send so many people to your videos, and they're I guess they're not like me, and they kind of they don't just sit there and listen to like the whole twenty minutes. Because I I do all the time because I just have time to do that, and I find it to be very fascinating. But and, and history is my favorite topic. But I think that when people are looking for more of an introduction to history, it's harder to get them to to get deep into the rabbit hole of like Philip Drugi and you know what I mean they kind of have to have more of an yeah because uh, it's just the system of education is made like this because yes. uh, when yes. we were in high school everyone knows that history is uh, uh, was teach was taught like a boring subject okay? yes just like every other science was pretty boring and it it's not boring itself it's boring the way they interpret it and teach us that's how they uh, cut this interest to this subject in the high school because they uh, give uh, the teachers the books that they edit for us to be a shippo. Okay, do you understand? Yes, Philip, I 100% agree. I think that it is 100% a system that makes you lose interest. I hated history. I hated it, hated it, hated it until I actually was looking into like, you know, the very beginning, you know, secrets of the Giza pyramid and stuff, and then you that leads you to further in, and then you see archaeological cover-ups and and giants, and and it fascinates your mind, and then you just kind of get deeper and deeper into it. So I think it's the most fascinating topic. History is the most fascinating topic for me personally, but um, it wasn't at all in high school at all. I hated history. I actually didn't like. I hated all of school to be honest with you. So <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone but I hates think that's it. very fascinating. Yeah, everyone hates it. I know. It sucks. It's a terrible it's a terrible system that we have right now. And when you go to college, you get drunk and get high and nothing else. That's what the a system lot of a needed. lot of getting high, a lot of getting drunk. Yeah. And that's what we were doing in the police academy. Just imagine police academy. Everyone was drinking beer and everyone was smoking cigarettes like, you know, so it was like okay to walk out and smoke a cigarette so i don't think smoking is any good but i was smoking because i was stupid i was inside the system i was like a shippo so i i, I liked beer i like smoking cigarettes and some of the guys like to smoke in uh, cocaine or heroin <laughs> or whatever just, to, just imagine how, how many policemen are actually on drugs in the whole world 
you'll be fr I'm... frightened because it's a huge amount of them. Well, you're Russian, so people can forgive you for drinking beer and smoking cigarettes. Well, it was a bad experience. I quit it when I was 27. So that's when I really woke up and changed my life to what I have today. I quit the system. I quit this police, uh, even though I was a pretty uh, a boss, a little boss, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so I had an economic crimes department. I was a head of economic crimes department. So you can imagine it's corruption, it's politics, it's uh, bribery and stuff like that. So can I ask you one last question. Yes. Um, um I guess uh, so. What, how exactly was the flood? Was it done with like a giant um, bomb into the ocean or what do you think? I think it was done several times, but the last one is probably done uh, after uh, tsunamis. Tsunamis, how, like was it done with earthquakes? Because I, I, I don't oh, know what yeah. you think of New Earth's channel. What do you think of New Earth's channel? Uh, I never watched it actually. I was uh, trying to, but I couldn't. That's not my format of uh, maybe she is a bad speaker for me and I can't understand what she's talking about. I know. Okay, I got you there. That's why I, it's shocking to me. I can't believe that her accent is, is that thick. It's, it's shocking to me, to be honest with you. I've never heard an accent so thick in my life. Yeah, maybe if I turn the speed like one and a half speed, maybe it would be better because <laughs> she is also very slow for me because I I mostly know everything she's talking about, and when she tries to explain, it's very slow. Maybe uh, for me it's hard to understand, and even this accent that is not distinguishable sometimes. So I can understand you guys perfectly because I understand American language, uh, but I don't speak it as good because I was not speaking for like 16 years. Oh, wow. Well, your English is pretty impeccable, dude. Well, I try to uh, do it better, but still it's a hard thing because uh, when you have a, a short a long a period a long term of not speaking it's very hard to get in the topic again because even though my topic is very hard to explain itself it has a lot of terminology that i don't know i'm speaking the language of teenager and trying to explain scientific mistakes of big scientists big historical mistakes which is pretty hard for a teenager who doesn't know all this uh, dictionary words you know what I'm saying yes I got you I got you no I mean but I think the formats fine you get your point across very well I mean sometimes I'm speaking English and I, I, I sometimes think that my vocabulary is too high for my audience so I kind of have to like translate my own thoughts into English yeah. so yeah. it's okay it's okay the um so what I wanted to say is that she talks about um uh, tribes in Russia, shamans, uh, people who could like perform what we would call magic, uh, sort of creating earthquakes. Is that something that you would like that would be part of this tsunami effect? I think that uh, some weaponry was actually left at some places at some time, some period of time when it was actually uh, available for everybody. So they like made those, uh, I wouldn't say it would it was like a safe point so so when you turn the red button it explodes but you have to control the red button okay you have to control some energy point to do that to perform that situation so if you have control of this network that was actually uh, controlling ourselves you can control those explosives that are inside those places, key, key points that can conduct a, an explosion and so the tsunami can occur. Do you understand yes, me? Yes, yes, I do. Yes, I understand. That's why in some wars uh, you have these stupid battles when they fight for some hill or something like that. And uh, this hill is, doesn't have any importance at all. But for somebody it has and they say it's uh, like uh, a key height or something like that. So 
we had all those battles everywhere and I've tried to uh, show it in one of my videos about uh, Stalingrad's battle, uh, Mamai Kurgan, which is an uh, ancient burial hill of one. Yes, uh, okay, yes, 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 I saw that. So that was the key point they were fighting for like half of a year and like maybe 100,000 people died on that hill for no reason. And so, you think that this is because that there was some sort of weaponry right there to yeah yes yeah. some yeah. hills some hills are the key points if if you control them if you perform magic on those hills you control uh, some uh, point of weapon device which was left by the ancient guys okay uh huh so that's why uh, you can perform such thing. Even though you have like low technology level, you can perform some uh, tsunami explosion. So you can like uh, kill all the enemy that conquered your country, and uh, you can like stay underground until the flood is over, and then come out of your bomb shelter and you know establish a new life. Uh, can I ask you like two more questions? Okay. Uh, so the Starford phenomenon, I've watched your videos on and how it was some sort of gas, gas harvesting, energy harvesting mm -hmm. point. There's one. Actually, you know what? That's, I'm going to skip that question. If, I, if we have time, I'll come back to it. How much time do you have? Is it okay if we keep talking? Well, I can, I can talk like for an hour. Real? Okay. Okay. Um, so with this, um, with like the giants, I guess, were the giants the people who were manning the, the star forts around the Earth? No, as I said, giants were living among the humans. They were uh, just the humans who grew their bodies, being more advanced in spiritual culture. Didn't you understand? Oh, yes, the, the, okay, I, I got you. Yes, I understand. So they're just more advanced humor, humankind. Okay. So, but we didn't evolve from them. We evolved into them. We are the same as them, but we are more not as advanced. We are just uh, newbies here, rookies, <laughs> and they are like sophomores and juniors, you know. And sure. you know, some of them are uh, seniors. Okay, do you understand? Yes. Is it possible for us from our current human form to like become giants, or do we have yes, to die and be born life, again? We, in a couple of lives, we can. Wow. Okay. A couple of lives, but right now the connection is shut down, so you cannot uh, upload your uh, past lives. And if you cannot cannot upload your past lives in your new body, you cannot grow uh, higher than your body can produce. Wow. Okay, I understand you. I understand that's you 100. That's how if you kill a giant and you can't uh, uh, be reborn as a giant in a giant body, you don't have. You have to. Uh, stay in line for ordinary bodies. That's why how we lost all our giants because the connection is lost. You cannot upload. Uh, you cannot do any uh, kids in, and you cannot upload your body in a new giant body. Okay, that's the only reason. I, another question I have for you. Okay, so that's uh, that connects it all for me. I, I got you one hundred percent now. Okay, so with the um. Star forts, that was something that we were like a global culture. And was that the actual, why was, was that part of the mud flood phenomenon to get rid of those forts? Of course, because yes. uh, they cut us like 20 to 80 percent. So 20 percent is being cut and the 80 percent is left. So you control 80 percent with soft power and you control 20 percent with hot wars and stuff like that. That's what they do, and that's the system. That's a Pareto rule, which which way, uh, which they expand in in our paradigm, and the Pareto rule is everywhere. It's in financial, it's in war, it's in human resources, in everywhere. You have a Pareto rule, twenty to eighty. Twenty percent is being hit, to eighty percent is left, and. 20% is lost, 80% is winning. I and whatever you. you do, you have to follow that rule. So they can kill 20% and leave 80%. Then they do the same with the left people of 80%. They kill 20% and stay 60% of the past. What? 
like what i guess because i know that i'm pretty awake and i know that a lot of my audience is awake what do you think is the next i guess step of awareness or changing because i know that you talk about power and like political power how do we as humanity know who is i guess the good the good one and who is the bad one because they have so they overlap so often how do we know? We have to figure what they do in and uh, see actual uh, meaning of what they do in. So if a guy who uh, promotes uh, taking out all those old maps from all those archives and stuff like that, he takes them out and shows them to the people. Is it good or is it, or is it bad? Of course he is good. He promotes the information. He yes. prom promotes yes. a leak. So, uh, but maybe that information hurts somebody. Maybe it hurts uh, church guys. Yes. So, uh, we know we cannot trust church guys. And if they are hit by that information, if they are set on question, what the hell are you guys doing? They probably will uh, protect themselves and spread fake false flag information about uh for example the great tatari and stuff like that so they control the science they don't want anything to come out of the science it specifically uh, will approve these new theories that come out of, from those leaks so as I long Sorry. as long as science shuts down and uh, keeps this silent Science keeps the silence. <laughs> as long as they do it, we cannot trust them. Okay, we cannot yes, trust them. I agree. I think but we I have to trust science. politicians who promote the real information. If we have those politicians who do that, we have to trust them because that's the only way we can expand. If we support those politicians, if we support those leaders that come up, we can move. I don't even call it science anymore at this point. I call it scientism. It's more like a religion than anything else when everything when everything is disproven and it doesn't come out. It's just a religion. It's believing in a false paradigm at a certain point. Do you think that, um, like, I've asked you this question a couple of times, like the nature of churches and sound and resonance? Yeah, I've seen your questions, but, uh, but I haven't seen them when the broadcast was on, so I'm pretty sorry about that. So, uh, resonance of sound was one of my videos about uh, ancient gods' music. So yes, you, I saw. You, yes, you can understand what type of music it has to be, and that classical music that which uh, is uh, well known, like Mozart, Beethoven, and stuff like that. It's also some type of uh, some type of music which could be used. But actually, the folk music, the music we uh, spread uh, in folk cultures, like uh, maybe, okay, Celtic music, maybe, okay, it would be like, or whatever music, any folk music, which is really folk music, is good enough to get you into some resonance with this uh, energy of this cell. Yeah, I mean, I sing every day. I just I sang for about an hour today, uh, and every time I'm done, I sing opera. I sing like all, like all classical music. And let me tell you, when I'm done singing, I can feel like my whole entire like head vibrating. I can feel like I feel so good. It's like not even. I do it every day. It's almost like therapy for me. So I 100% think it connects you to something. When yet when I when you get really into music and when you can sing like or not sing but even play with really good technique where you're not thinking about it so much, it's almost like you get lost in the world. So I really do think it is something has some very special properties to it. And I've had some really interesting experiences um, with music. For example, um, if you stand right next to someone and you sing the same vowel form like an o like o with another person and you can format it and you can get it to be the same 
you experience this expansion of resonance around your entire head and you can literally hear it it feels like you are inside of a bell just like two people it's incredible what happens to your head and it happens sometimes with choirs and choruses too where the um the tuning is so perfect that the higher overtones become huge and overwhelming they like take over your whole head and they take over your whole body you and it's like a moment where it's just like whoa something just crazy just happened it's only happened like three or four times to me that's why i'm really asking because i think that these churches of the past of the reason why they're shaped the way they are has something to do with ex expanding the resonance and, and creating the most resonant space for people to be singing and stuff yeah, some churches do that, and that's really good because they keep this tradition. Uh, maybe it's the only thing that actually uh, attracted people at some point of time because they knew that singing is something familiar to their ancestors uh, singing to them when they sing in lullabies and stuff like that. It's, it's like uh, the music itself is a huge attraction to any ideas, any propaganda. That's why they use this so-called popular music to uh, oh, terrible, change. Man. What? It's terrible. Yeah, they use it to to change our vibration, uh, but sometimes they lose because although uh, they use music in bad purposes, in evil purposes. Um, but uh, sometimes still good uh, music comes up and they can do nothing with it and they have to let it in. But then they shut down those singers and kill them uh, using maybe drugs and alcohol and stuff like that. So that's why they get rid of them. Uh, for example, you can you know name whoever was dead from drugs or alcohol and was a good singer. Uh, like Kurt Cobain for example for yeah example. for example so they are telling the truth in their lyrics and uh, they're really genius uh, type of uh, verses and uh, sounds they produce in their music which actually vibrates the good way and keeps people uh, in their bodies so-called spiritual bodies in good way and but when you hear some you know britney spears or you know something like that <sighs> you definitely dissolve in your mental and spiritual body you dissolve to and degrade and degrade degradation complete degradation of your spiritual level what do you think about the idea of humans um for example i showed an article about children that live in the wild their whole lives and that they don't actually they can't even attain language function so they can't speak a language when they come back into society do you think that um humanity at some point had like telepathy they didn't need to speak they could just read each other's minds of course they did that's the okay. only way how to explain that we don't have no writings yes yes that's very true that's true. and the and the whole past lives part where you're born with the um, why wouldn't there be writing you're it's perfectly logical and you know what uh somebody Michael, asked me being about, recorded, please uh, some somebody asked me about why were they so smart and didn't picture anything or made a video uh so we can watch it they didn't well, maybe <laughs> we, maybe they did but we cannot you know turn it on because we think it's like <laughs> a stone or something or maybe uh, you know we have to like uh, get in this spiritual uh, viewing of something that we cannot view right now, thinking that it's not informa informative thing, uh, but it is. Because in Russian, uh, when they talk about those fairy tales, uh, they call it even uh, exactly telling the story, like telling, uh, showing the story, not just. Yes. Okay, yes. When they told the story, it was called show in the story. It was a show. So when you read those books, those runic symbols, you have to like, you know, watch a 3D picture of what they, you see actually, because you have uh, not only one meaning of one letter, you have a rune, who, which means a word, a number at the same time, and has many different 
like Chinese writing, it has many different variations in, uh, you know, calligraphy and stuff like that. So if you like mark a little dot, it means exactly maybe a different meaning. Yes. But yes, yes, yes. so it's just a science of writing and uh, telling the information in this in this type of writing, which is runic and hieroglypho hieroglyph in geroglyphs or whatever you call them. So uh, about the boy who was uh, born in the jungle, you know, this, this, that's the thing they do with us because if you haven't seen anything or uh, your parents didn't show it to you until you're three years old, your brain doesn't accept this image. And even though yes. you can touch it, you cannot understand what it looks like because it's not uploaded in your brain while you were expanding your brain as a, a structure of your body. Understand me? Yes, it's not. The reality is created by the time you're three. I got you. When they come back into society, they, they, they die. They die quickly, too. Yeah. You can, you can touch it, but you cannot see it. So that's the way those uh, Russian magicians live in those forests. Uh, they use all those uh, forests, uh, you know, grasses and all those stuff. So, you know, herbs, whatever you call them. And they can expand their minds so they can see it all. Just like Mexicans, uh, you know, Indians and stuff like that. They used it. All the animals use it, those uh, herbs to you know you call it ayahuasca maybe stuff like that so maybe so this is the way you can get in in touch with these creatures that can provide you information and they they live amongst us and they are more advanced they are not as numerous as humankind but they can provide us information and they can uh, actually interact with us and communicate with us but we cannot see them uh, we we call them ghosts we call them yetis we call them you know snow or whatever and vampires you call them whatever you call them they are more advanced than we are in spiritual bodies and they cannot be seen because you can't see them that's the only way you haven't wow. seen them when you were young, and you cannot see them right now. You have to uh, get high on some herb, special herb, and then you can see them. Okay? You have to expand your brain. What do you think about the idea, like, because you said that, um, I, I guess, if the Kali Yuga is ended, if that time period of, of whatever is ended, then um, would it be in the next life that we would see, like, a more positive effect towards change and if so what do you think about the idea of suicide not that I'm like gonna kill myself but what do you think about it suicide is way out of this cell but it's not well accepted by your uh, well you have to know something about the Navi worlds uh, what are they actually for uh, for those who live in Midgard but uh, the first part of the question was uh, could you repeat, please? Um, so, um, is the next life sort of if we is the next life the start of our own spiritual expansion or our our ability to upload our past lives? No, no. Until we uh, return the the order, we cannot do anything. We have to return the order to fix up this place, uh, reestablish the connection. And only after that we can upload our past lives experience to our bodies. How do you understand me? Until yes, we do it, yes. no one's going to do it for us. No one. And we're going to be under parasitic control like we are. Until we start establishing the old world order or new world order, whatever you call it. I think that, that's, that's, that, that even statement is um, something that is going to 
get people to uh, really hate on this video or hate on this talk, but I think that they have to really understand what you're talking about and, and they have to really listen to what you're saying. They really do. People have to listen before they comment on this. You know what I mean? Yeah, we have to understand. We have a window of opportunity right now because uh, that, uh, that thing that started in 2016 or maybe 2012, or maybe in 1960s, the end of Kali Yuga is actually the opportunity for us to start changing and returning the order that we had, returning the connection. We need to turn this Wi-Fi on or we're going to get stuck for another period of time on the connection of those who are right now leading our shippo. Well, Philip, I kind of talk about this idea where, um, for example, like I'll, like me and another person or people on my channel, I think that the people who awake and are awake, we have some sort of connection already because so many times I get so many comments about people saying, wow, I was just thinking about this yesterday and you put up this video. And I get that a lot. Like every day I get that comment. And I get that comment from one of my good friends uh, in Connecticut. And she talks about it too. She says like, wow, you just said this and I was just thinking this. Or I was driving by this and um, I was thinking this at the same time and they connect. And do you think that, for example, um, I think that you agree that thoughts create your reality, right? Yeah, I agree. But it's a little different from what you're saying. We have a critical mass on so yes. maybe less. If we have a critical mass and we agree on exact meaning of this thing, this thing is probably going to happen. And if we don't have critical mass, if we have disagreeing with one another on some point, if we are not discussing it or maybe we are not informed of it, we cannot do anything with it. We, That's um, the I've called this like the hundredth monkey effect. Yes, it, yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, same thing, same thing. It's the way to explain it for so, so people can understand. But actually, we have to do something, not just think of the same thing. We have to like make it a conclusive resume or video about something. And it's going to be maybe simple as the video I've shown in, in the beginning of the broadcast. It's going gonna, it's gonna to have to be simple and clear so those who are awake enough can understand the uh, actual meaning of this video. And that's how we wake those people to a higher level of information. That's the only way, step by step. So first thing first, we have to do something with families. We have to reestablish the connection of our ancestors and the offsprings. If we cannot do that, there's no way we can get any order. Second thing is we have to get rid of those parasitic things. Because yeah. as soon as we get families, we can connect the families together and push out those who are not accepting family type of structure. Uh, yes, I agree to, with you. We have to return uh, the way of living of those who lived before us. It's simple and clear. You cannot invent anything already. It was invented. It was already thought about. It was the only way to so we can control ourselves. We have to be in, inside the family structure. That's why they are destroying families. That's why they propaganda and all this family useless thing. Okay? Just because they they have this they have those clans and families, we don't have them. Yes, That's and they, how stick, they, control they stick together. They stick together and they yeah. and and my family, my family personally, my situation is like it's totally infighting. They all fight with each other. They are not close at all. They they stab each other in the back, and they 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 are not close at all. It's not anything like I would call a family. It's very it's very strange. It's almost like the opposite of how a family should be. You know, they don't hold strength in numbers. They sort of hold strength individually and use their own power to manipulate each other. It's very strange because it's exactly, it's the exact um, spitting image of what's happening in society, how the power structure is manipulating the weaker people. That's exactly how my family structure is, is like the people with the most power. They 
manipulate the ones who have less power, I guess you could say. And it's very sad to me. I, I really, it's very sad to me. And I don't like it at all. I wish family structures re did return to normal because it's, I think it's totally inverted right now. It's, it's a reflection of what it should be, not at all what it should be. Yeah, but we have to do it step by step because if we don't, if we do it quick, we can ruin the whole thing and the war gonna start and we can, we're gonna kill each other just for fun. Well, you're going to see, I think that you're seeing some sort of psychopathy and, and, and just insanity, crazy people that are just growing, that are in like my age, my age group who are like, cause I'm only 23. So people who are um, like my age and younger and maybe up to maybe 25, 26, 27, the, this, this group of people has some of the most in, insane psychopathic um, traits that I've ever ever seen. I can't even I can't even talk to another person my age without feeling that I am going to offend them to the point that they're going to uh, like attack me, not physically, but you know verbally attack me. And I don't understand it. People people are getting too caught up in their individuality, the the person themselves than if they um than like learning from each other. People want to know that they know everything about something. And if you try and like say something that they don't know, it becomes like you're fighting with them instead of just like a learning experience. Like for example, this conversation, Philip, is like the most fascinating conversation I've ever had with another person. And like I'm learning so much, but I don't like see you as someone, uh, like as like competition or uh, an adversary or an enemy of any any type. I see it like as just fascinating and my mind is just like expanding and like a teacher sort of thing. And I don't find that with people in my age group. I find that they want to know that they know everything and that they cannot learn anymore and that they find it to be evil or, or bad or dark to even try and explain anything to them. It's very scary scary times for for people that's where i think that the the war is going to come from the young people yeah of course this this how they stole our kids from us they, it is it is so uh, if you lose connection if you show your kids that you lose connection to your uh parents you don't live with the same house in the same house with them they live in a different house different maybe state maybe different county or maybe even different country. You show it as an example to your kids. Do you think your kids gonna do the same? Of course they're gonna do the same. They're gonna leave you as soon as they go to college and they will never return. Yes, I guess. I, I that's, guess. that's what we do and we do it to our kids by our own hands, with our own hands. And you know what? What I wanted to show, I wanted to say about teaching and stuff like that. I didn't wanna be a teacher of anyone but i have to do it because if not me who is gonna do it nobody's gonna do it that's exactly so, how i feel philip if, if if i don't do something who else is gonna say anything who else is gonna like lead lead other people to like your channel or to nick research or or, or any channel if if other people aren't gonna speak to their audiences about it like how how are other people gonna know the information they people don't just find this stuff. It took four years to like even search and find these types of sources and stuff. That's why I think it's necessary to like really, I guess like the video I made about you with ancient technology, I'd already mentioned you like four times and people weren't like flocking. So it's just like you have to really that this is important information and that they have to look at it. If they don't look at it, they're really missing out. It's so it's ridiculous to me actually that that's what you have to do. They use you as a, uh, you you pretend to be an alarm clock man, and they see, <laughs> yeah. look, look at you at the, at the alarm clock. Alarm clock supposed to wake up. He, he, it doesn't supposed to tell you what to do, yes. because and you try to tell them what to do, and be, and they looked at you as a, an alarm clock and say, well, well you know, suppose you're smart. You're a smart alarm clock. I don't want smart alarm clock. I have my smartphone. Thanks a lot. I don't want to watch this. So that's what you do. So, and, and what about teaching? Again, uh, in Russia, we have this uh, proverb, or, or I don't know, you, maybe just an uh, ancient, uh, ancient thing. So, as long as soon as you're ready to receive a teaching or 
get get gain study of something you get your own teacher on that topic as soon as you feel ready you always get your teacher so yes i agree i agree you can only get it once you once you're ready to receive information it's a i i just i say this all the time it's a choice to understand the world you have to choose it you have to consciously say i want to know if someone shows you something and you do not want to know it or you have not chosen to know it if it's out of if it's out of surprise you can't just show someone something without them choosing to try and understand it because if they choose to not understand it then they're not going to understand it and it will not change their paradigm it will not get to them and i find that people say so often why don't why doesn't this person wake up why why do i show them information and they just like kind of ignore it it's because they haven't made the conscious choice to seek the information themselves and you're kind of just becoming a teacher without um i guess a teacher without even the person asking for the information and i think that sort of um request is absolutely necessary to the learning process without it there is no learning there is just there's a sort of a it, it's a filter of your brain it goes right out of your brain the information yeah in fact if we uh think about our body the current body that we all obtain uh, this is a filter this is a filter uh, between our conscience and this world and, and we uh, expand our body as some maybe training machine we can train it to sit and eat and or we can train it to lay on the couch uh, we can train it to run uh, f like 20 miles a day and be like a good runner we can train it to you know jump high or we can train it to pull the tramways or huge trucks loaded with cargo by our own teeth, only hanging with our own teeth. Mm -hmm. We can train it. We can do any magnificent thing. Like we can, you know, dive in the ocean for tens of minutes and not breathe. We can train our body whatever we want. Yes, you know it's interesting that you say that. Um, uh, so many people like because I, I it, it, like people have issues with like breathing when they sing. Like they can't like they have to like take a lot of breaths. And I find that like once you really know what you're doing with it, you can just sing forever and you don't need a breath. You just don't need them. They don't even. It's not even a, a requirement to breathe. It just becomes like you can just go on forever and sing. It, it's it's fascinating to me that like. Uh, once you kind of know what you're doing with it, it becomes so inbuilt that it that the ability itself becomes super expansive. It's incredible. I think that those sorts of like the human body just being able to do anything that you put the effort in to learn how to do, it can do it at the best level possible, essentially. I think that's such an incredible gift. And people have such doubts about that sort of stuff. I think that people are really um sort of conditioned to not believe that they can do everything that they want to do. It's sort of like you have to stay at the same level as your peers because once you start getting ahead, people tear you down. Yeah, well, that's what yoga was about. Uh, yoga is uh, our ancient knowledge that we all obtained. And yoga was uh, a permanent uh, state of our body, which we trained every day. And yoga was the way of our you know lifetime so everyone was a yoga because if you if you don't do yoga you don't live as long if you don't do yoga you don't get connected to all those uh information of uh universe and stuff like that so that's why you have to train your body to be healthy and perform well so all your uh, system blood system nervous system is okay and you can check it okay every time you go to sleep you connect to uh, navi world with uh, more efforts more efficient and for more time and more conscious trips than just a regular body which is not trained okay do you understand why we need this trained body in the case yes, of I think it's I think it's very important. Is that why people um, talk about lucid dreaming? Like, do you know lucid dreaming? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lucid yeah. dreaming is uh, just the first step to connection of 
uh, Navi world. It's just uh, like you know, safe uh, zone for new newbies to step into the higher levels. Have you found a connection to this world yourself? No, I'm just a newbie like everyone else. Because, <laughs> you know, yeah, okay. I can fly. I can fly, and uh, that's probably it. Because uh, I've got another type of connection. Uh, I've got uh, some maybe uh, inside connection. Mm -hmm. So some people just uh, get the information uh, by uh, thinking. So uh, like when you think of something new which you don't know, you get some information and you uh, like reject it because you think it's stupid. But I don't reject any information that I can come up with. And I'm always thinking, and uh, maybe it's the right thing. I sometimes remember it, sometimes I forget it. But for quite like two months, I already started marking the thing. And I'm trying to uh, think about what I'm actually thinking about. So, and really, I start to write down my thinkings and my thoughts. So I think I'll come up with something new for you guys. So uh, maybe my my mission is to uh, know all these things that I know and make a resume for all you guys to uh, maybe uh, go to a, a right path. Yeah. Maybe that's my mission. That's, I agree with you 100%. That's my mission as well. 100% the same exact thing, a, um, just like a resource. Well, because, like, for example, I try and, like, make these videos that are, like, about very specific topics, and here are all the sources that you can look at that will give you the most bang for your buck, like the most information for your time. And then I give them to said that um, you don't dismiss anything. Everything is possible. I'm the same exact way. Everything is possible. But I think that there, when you get to a certain point of knowing information, it's almost like that you have to dismiss things that have already been said to you that you've dis discounted. And then you have to kind of lead people in the right direction. And I find that so many people are in a direction where they, um, if truth is a, is a ball of yarn, a ball of string, they pull on the wrong part of the string, and then they start pulling on parts all around, and then the whole thing gets sort of um, like messed up. It gets like a knot because they've pulled on too many parts of the truth without mistakes. really, yes, mistakes, without really any um, direction of reality. And so I find that that's like a big issue all the time. Like I get so many comments about that, like that are just wrong. They can't, they can't be right, I guess you could say. They've already been disproven or discounted so many times. Well, if I had more dictionary, I would explain what you are saying uh, in more uh, easy way. But you're kind of right. It's the way things are. We are all connected mentally to something. Our job, our car, our kids, our family, and this whole bunch of things that we are connected with those strings. And we actually are slaves of all those things that surround us and even city even the village even the town is some object which uh, hangs us on the string and we actually move it this is mentally how it uh, can be shown on the scheme this is a blueprint of our life we are, are connected and hooked up to everything that's why matrix movie uh, showed this in this uh, battery type of situation when every human is a battery of the system. This is actually uh, literally how things are. But uh, mentally and really, we are just pulling the strings with our bodies. And those strings are pretty hard to take off. Uh, when you take off maybe your friend and maybe he is like very bad guy and you decide to not to talk to him it's very hard to cut him off yourself and you know you 
when you like break up with your girlfriend and stuff like that it's very hard to take off the string too when you quit your job when you quit your college or maybe high school you leave your friends behind and you unhook this string from you this is the way things are we are all hooked up by those strings and if we shake a lot we disturb every every object around us and they start to look at us and be mad and be pissed off why they uh, why are you doing this uh, stop don't shake us we are so good when you work on us when you uh, pull us to the direction we want and stuff like that so we are all hooked up so matrix is basically telling us the truth about how things are mm -hmm. I agree with you. This guy in the chat, I just don't know, because there's about 50 people like watching this. Do yeah. you do you want to address this? Do you, I mean, he says that you're stealing his information and stuff from his channel, but I don't think so. Do you Flat Earth Nation, De Aria Praetorita? Because he says... Maybe. Oh, we have Ludin Rusi here. <laughs> it's my it's my fellow guy from Vladivostok who was making video about uh, giant trees. We have him in the yes. chat right now. Yes. Well, it's sorry we have I have to stop this broadcast today because uh, I have to do something already. It's uh, maybe tomorrow I have a broadcast uh, with. Uh, one my one of my new friends from Britain, she is working on some newspaper. Maybe she wants to uh, get a record of this interview with my with me. And hi, 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 David. So uh, so see okay. you later, guys, everybody. And uh, we and John gonna leave for a minute and talk with uh, about this broadcast. So thanks a lot for watching you. Sorry for maybe so many topics today, but it was a free talk. So thanks a lot, everybody. Bye.